Warning, this video contains themes of violence, death, and gang activity. The purpose of this video is to provide an educational account of historical events in the mainstream music industry. No disrespect is intended, and this video does not intend to glorify or glamorize the gang lifestyle. Every effort has been made to remove anything from this video that is against YouTube's community guidelines, including swearing, violence, drug use, and firearms. But if you'd like to see a fully uncut version of this video with everything I cannot show you on YouTube, then head on over to patreon.com slash traplawross where you can watch all of my biggest documentaries uncut for just two bucks. But if you're not into that, just hit the subscribe button and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you. As I recently covered in my video, Young Boy, Real Killer or Fake Gangster, the huge popularity of this Louisiana native has brought an unprecedented amount of attention to his hometown of Baton Rouge, the capital of the state, with fans of gangster rap becoming fascinated by his violent portrayals of the raging gang war in the city that had previously been largely invisible to those following the rap scene. Besides a few other local talents like Boosie, who unfortunately ended up losing much of his career to the notorious Louisiana prison system, generally Baton Baton Rouge has been overlooked by mainstream followers of gangster rap in favor of cities with more famous gang cultures like Chicago and Los Angeles. As a result of numerous cases and a lengthy period restricting him to house arrest, since 2020, Youngboy has been mostly staying out of Baton Rouge after catching numerous cases in the city and in other states. So as a result, for the past few years, Louisiana's most wanted rapper is actually living a calmer family life in a luxury Utah mansion while recording tons of music throughout his house arrest. However, while Youngboy has been gone, enjoying the safety of house arrest in Utah, the gang war on the streets of Baton Rouge has continued to escalate and claim lives, with record-breaking murder rates making the city seem completely out of control in recent years, with those rates peaking in 2021 when the city experienced its deadliest year on record. Baton Rouge has a gang problem. Based on our conversations with our intelligence our personnel, our law enforcement partners, and our truce initiative, we have around eight groups or gangs uh, that are actively, uh, we believe, engaged in violence in the city of Baton Rouge. Made more than 3,100 felony arrests this year, 355 juveniles, and we've seized more than 1,366 firearms. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Baton Rouge Police Department Street Crime Unit has recently come under fire for serious claims of corruption. Latest investigation into Baton Rouge Police, four officers facing charges of corruption in connection to a beating and tasing incident. Even being accused of torturing suspects in a secret warehouse labeled the Brave Cave. After lead investigator Scotty Hunter and the WFBI team exposed allegations of police misconduct in a secreted garage, called the Brave Cave. In short, the gangland of Baton Rouge seems like a deadly hellscape that anyone would surely escape if given the chance. Unfortunately, despite all of the money, fame, and opportunities that Youngboy's many affiliates from his NBA and 4K trade crews now have at their disposal, their deep roots in the city's violent underworld continues to make them prime targets for violent attacks. And as the years have gone by, a whole new generation of street-affiliated youngsters have come up out of Baton Rouge, hungry to prove themselves both in the streets and in the city's now buzzing rap scene. Success in the rap game could well be their ticket out of the war zone if only they're able to get out before it's too late. And sadly, one of the brightest stars to come out of the city since Youngboy, an 18-year-old aspiring rapper named True Bleeder, would end up losing his life right when he was about to make his breakthrough in early 2022. His tragic fate stemmed from events that took place during the deadly year of 2021, when an all-out war broke out between two factions taking place in both the streets and in music. So today, we're going to take a closer look at the deadly war that's still raging in Baton Rouge today since Youngboy left the city behind. And we're going to work out why this overlooked city really is one of the most dangerous places in America to be a rapper. Baton Rouge has a gang problem. And while crime knows no age, the number of juveniles arrested for violent crimes is skyrocketing, leaving us with one question. How did we get here? Police have identified the two people killed in yesterday's drive-by shooting near the Mall of Louisiana. See my brother, my little boy. Brother, brother, my big brother. How did he die? He got killed by my birthday party. You cannot go home to mama after you've taken an AR-15. And we've learned that there is no simple or single answer. Over the course of this program, we're going to take you into the streets and to the neighborhoods to figure out the root cause of what is behind all of this.
Despite contemporary rap fans' attention on Baton Rouge and its gangs, the interest in the city has largely come off the back of the enormous success of Youngboy during the late 2010s. But even before Youngboy put BR on the map, gangs had been running the streets for years, and reports of escalating gang activity and crime have placed the city amongst the most dangerous in the country all the way back to at least the 1980s. The reasons for the gang problem are numerous and complex, from the generational trauma created by a history of exceptionally cruel slavery in the state, to the extreme racism, discrimination, and segregation during the Jim Crow era, which in many ways begun in Louisiana, which in modern times placed Louisiana as one of the poorest states in the country, and Baton Rouge itself being one of the poorest areas in Louisiana. Moreover, minorities, including African Americans, have significantly more people living below the poverty line compared to the city's white inhabitants, despite white people in fact being the minority within Baton Rouge. Combine this with the fact that Louisiana commonly has the highest incarceration state in the nation, which affects particularly the black population, further enabling their marginalization in the state. It's no surprise then that the deeply disenfranchised black youth in Baton Rouge have for decades turned to gangs in order to find meaning and structure in their lives. However, as mentioned, something has been different in recent years. The city has seen unprecedented murder rates that have largely been influenced by gang activity, creating a deadly cycle of reprisals that just continues to escalate. Crime touches every corner of our city. Day or night, predators lurk among us. And while crime knows no age, the number of juveniles arrested for violent crimes is skyrocketing, leaving us with one question. How do we get here? And we've learned that there is no simple or single answer. Over the course of this program, we're going to take you into the streets and to the neighborhoods to figure out the root cause of what is behind all of this. And 2021 could lead to another dubious distinction. Last year, the city set a record with 117 murders. This year, 100 people have been murdered. That's just through mid-August. Ten of the victims, 17 years old or younger. In the same time period last year, 80 people were killed. Even more alarming is the number of juveniles arrested for murder. Ten so far this year, compare that to five for all of last year and eight in 2019. There's a lot of allegations right now, a lot of arrests that are made involving juvenile and juvenile violent crime and, and deaths and, and guns. And um, you know, that's, that's the wrong thing to be happening with uh, young children. The WBRZ investigative unit counting nearly a dozen juveniles arrested just this year for high profile crimes around the capital city. Oh. The ones include the ambush at a college drive apartment complex pool that left a toddler dead. Two teens were arrested in that case. Also this year, shooting at the IHOP on Segan Lane. A teen among those arrested implicated in that murder. A 15 year old charged in the carjacking of a nurse at Our Lady of the Lake. Also in July, a teen arrested for killing a dad in Zachary after they exchanged gunfire in his home. That teen was there to see his girlfriend. You cannot go home to mama after you've taken an AR-15 and coax someone to come out at night to rob him and then shoot him and try to kill him and then go home to your mom and eat cornflakes. And it's in this deadly environment that a young rapper by the name of True Bleeder entered the Baton Rouge rap scene and begun making a name for himself. True Bleeder, real name Dante Dorsey, was an 18-year-old rapper who was known for his versatile style that reminded many of the city's biggest star, Youngboy. Arguably, True Bleeder also showcased a similar amount of potential as a young Youngboy, making songs that delivered both highly aggressive bars while at other times mixing rapping and singing with heartfelt stories about the rough life on the streets of Baton Rouge. Unfortunately, True Bleeder's young life and his promising rap career would come to an untimely end before it had even properly begun, when he and his friend were gunned down in their hometown on the 25th of February 2022. Police have identified the two people killed in yesterday's drive-by shooting near the Mall of Louisiana, 18-year-old Dante Dorsey and 19-year-old Clifton Lindsay, both from Baton Rouge. To understand the tragic story of True Bleeder and how it's connected to the broader street politics of Baton Rouge that connect all the way to Youngboy and his friends, we need to go all the way back to the beginning of his young life. True Bleeder hailed from the Glen Oaks neighborhood in North Baton Rouge, one of the many impoverished and crime-ridden areas in the city's north side. Details have been released about a Fatal feud in Baton Rouge's Glen Oaks neighborhood yesterday. Person in serious condition tonight after being shot this afternoon in the Glen Oaks neighborhood. Tonight our team is learning more about the man facing charges after a deadly shootout in the Glen Oaks area. This neighborhood was also home to the late rapper G Money, good friend and label mate of Youngboy's top surviving op, Fredo Bang. And these two can even be seen together in the studio in an old video from when True Bleeder was barely a teenager. Also in that video is a man named Larry from a Glen Oaks based rap collective called Jungle Music, which played an important role 
in the life of a young troop leader. Despite being close to troop leader and G Money, Larry was also seemingly a childhood friend of Youngboy's best friend and NBA co-founder OG33, with this showing just how interconnected all of the people in this story were before the war in the streets tore them apart. In 2014, when troop leader was still just a kid, a tragic event took place that would permanently alter his life. On the 28th of March, during a birthday party in concert at the Baker Civic Center just north of Baton Rouge, a teenager named Nakadron Williams would suddenly open fire on the crowd of partying teenagers, killing three and wounding one. These victims would include the big brother of Troop Leader, called Mun, real name Kendall Camone Dorsey, as well as a good friend of Fredo Bang, Crazy Trey, real name Deontre Jermaine Clayball. During Williams' trial, it would be revealed that the three people killed were in fact unintended targets, while the intended target of the shooting was the fourth surviving victim who had had a confrontation with Williams shortly before the shooting. However, the shooting would still seemingly become tied to both Troop Leader's neighborhood of Glen Oaks as well as Fredo Bang, as news would report how Williams, aka Scrappy, was part of a gang called Acres Farm, who were based about five miles north of Glen Oaks, separated by the Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Rapper Lit B from Acres Farm would seemingly shout out Scrappy in a song, and witnesses would tell how Williams had also been involved in earlier related altercations leading up to this shooting, with at least one of these happening around the Glen Oaks neighborhood. Moreover, it would turn out that this concert slash birthday party was actually for Fredo Bang, real name Frederick Givens, although the local news would actually misspell his name. Fredo Bang would even later open up about losing his friend Crazy Trey that night during a Vlad TV interview. How did he die? He got killed at my birthday party. He got it killed? Was, it was supposed to be my show, but they had labeled it as my birthday party. He got killed at your birthday party? Yeah. You got shot? Yeah. The news would also mention messages that had been sent between Fredo and a girl where the girl had allegedly revealed the identity of the shooter to him. Now, this is significant because Snapchat messages between incarcerated Williams, aka Scrappy, and another person would later be posted on Reddit, where Scrappy seemingly accuses Fredo Bang of being a snitch because he didn't delete incriminating messages from his phone about the shooting. There would also be photos posted on Reddit about paperwork that seems to list Fredo Bang as a witness in the case, although the document also states that Fredo did not identify the shooter to police. Now, for the record, Fredo Bang is definitely not snitching, and as far as I'm aware, he has kept it solid throughout his career, despite his ops constantly trying to discredit him. But regardless, Scrappy later on did several live streams from prison, during which he would diss Fredo Bang and accuse him of snitching, even going through the paperwork. Fred, you're giving on my paperwork right here. That's his name right there, you see it right there. Now, if you see right here, when it says, given then asked her to communicate with the police, and this is his number, 225. 955 five, 0916. They still got the same number. And it says, message has been down. I mean, the screenshot of my picture, send it to the people. I ain't even do that. What's well, his Instagram name, man? His Instagram name is on here is Fredo Bang, right there. I'll tell you right there. Fredo underscore Bang. I repeat, Fredo underscore Bang. Fredo would then seemingly respond to these allegations, calling them lies. In prison, Scrappy would also associate himself with Fredo Bang's enemies, such as people from BBG, including BBG Block, the brother of BBG Baby Joe, who is actually very close with Youngboy. Meanwhile, to a young troop leader and his neighborhood, the death of his big brother Mun was a huge loss, and in an old video posted on Jungle Music Larry's YouTube channel shortly after Mun's death, a young troop leader can be seen hanging with a large group of older guys, all gathered to pay respects to his fallen brother. <laughs> The death of Mun would push True Bleeder to take music seriously, and so he and his partners would create a crew called Munway in his honor. Bro, when our cousin died at 15, so it's like, that's why we came up with the Munway shit. That was, that was his name, Mun. Yeah, that's why he started rapping. Like. That why he started rapping and taking this shit more harder, so we came up with the Munway shit. As True Bleeder got a bit older, he would begin to release music under the name Munway D, still being heavily associated with the jungle music movement from Glen Oaks. And even though he was very young, his music would, from the very beginning, would show a great potential for talent as well as maturity far beyond his years. However, unfortunately, it's not as easy as simply leaving the streets behind and focusing on music. And as his career begun, so too would the escalation of a deadly war between two of Baton Rouge's most deadly but lesser known gangs. Losing his brother at a young age wouldn't make True Bleeder only motivated in pursuing music, it would also make him yearn for revenge and turn to the streets. Perhaps it was the combination of the two that would eventually lead True Bleeder and his partners, such as his older brother, Oak Boy Coco, also known as Co Bleeder. Psst. See my brother, my little brother. Bird friend, my big brother, my big brother Mun, he had passed away. 2014. Uh -huh. Then my little brother just 
took over their RFC. And his cousin, Munway Day, later known as Real Bleeder, to come up with a new name for their clique, the Bleeders, or originally True Bleeders. With this name apparently reflecting the struggles that they had gone through since a young age and their dedication for their movement, putting their blood into this. We young, bro, like we the youngins, you know what I'm saying? So, just out going pay the but it's like, we in the hood, like mind you, my other cousin, his brother, he died at 15. Mm. And our partner, he died at 14, like, so came up at 15, 14, just so like, we just in front of the store. I'm like, bitch, we gonna be true bleeders. I just be thinking of like, a lot of because like, this should be meaning a lot. So I'm like, we gonna be true bleeders, you hear me? Like, we true bleeders. He like, oh yeah, bitch. He f***ing with it, but like, he showed me he f***ing with it and took it more serious and changed all this Instagram name to True Bleeder and really start rapping and going in and, like, you know what I'm saying? So, so but you, we so mind you, gave, him, you gave him the name. You yeah. came up with the name. Yeah. In the following years, the Bleeders would form relationships with numerous other gangs, groups, and neighborhoods in Baton Rouge, such as the jungle music movement from Glen Oaks that they had started with, which nowadays is mainly still represented by Jungle Music Larry. They're also heavily clicked up with people from the nearby Zion City neighborhood, led in music by the rapper TG Commas, who is one of the hottest up and coming rappers in Baton Rouge right now and partnered up with the Bleeders under their Trench Business Collective. Bleeders are also associated with Fredo Bang's TBG, aka Top Boy Gorilla. Crew, the group that famously went to war with Youngboy and his NBA 4K Trey Cruz after the death of friend turned enemy G Money, TBG's most promising rapper. The roots of the affiliation between the Bleeders and TBG dates all the way back to the night when Fredo Bang's good friend Crazy Trey was killed together with True Bleeder's brother. Another rapper affiliated with TBG and connected to the Bleeders, known as Hot Boy Do, is currently incarcerated on murder charges. Now, the Bleeders are also known to have beef with various gangs in Baton Rouge, but one in particular that's most prominent is their feud with a gang called the Vultures. The two gangs have been in a years-long war that's been waged both in the street and in music. The Vultures hail from the Scotlandville community located in the northeast of Baton Rouge, but their hood on the southern end of Scotlandville is more commonly known as Bankstown, which is separated from Glen Oaks and Zion City by the Interstate 110 that runs through the city. Vultures also have some well-known rappers that rep the name YKWHIF, which stands for You Know What It's Hitting For. People like YKWIHF V and his cousin YKWHIF Car. Interestingly, V and Car actually used to be friends with True Bleeders' fallen brother Mun before their beef with the Bleeders. Both were also seemingly part of the Jungle Music Collective that both Mun and True Bleeder were associated with. But Vultures are not the only gang that the Bleeders have beef with, and there's one gang in particular that represents a link between the story of True Bleeder and Youngboy, as well as his NBA slash 4K Trey partners. This group hails from the Sherwood Forest neighborhood, and is represented by B-Way Youngie, who is Youngboy's actual little brother, both sharing the same father. The gang has been known by different names such as Goblin Gang or DHG that stands for Dark Hearted Goblins or sometimes Six to Crew. While B-Way has not officially been part of Youngboy's NBA label, he can often be seen hanging out and making music with NBA or 4K Trey members like Ben 10, BBG Baby Joe and Big B. B-Way's beef with Bleeders stems back to at least 2019 when he and his brother were arrested in relation to a shooting that killed 17-year-old Javon Brown. Two brothers wanted in the deadly shooting of a student walking home from school are now in custody. Javon was allegedly associated with another gang with ties to the Bleeders called 300, not to be confused with the Chicago gang of the same name. This made B-Way an enemy of the Bleeders too. Hop out like this. Hop out. No pistol with me. Hop out with this. And there are also other NBA and 4K Trey members with ties to the Vultures, including Ben 10, who is said to actually have family ties with some members, as well as Herm and Big B, who both hail from Bankstown. Bro, where we at? Where we at with it right now, man? Bankstown, USA, you hear me? That's how we bank, you hear yeah. me? That's what it is, bro. Clearly, Baton Rouge is a complicated and intricate network of interconnected gangs, all of which have some kind of beef by association, which often makes it hard to determine exactly why or who might have caused the beef to kick off to begin with. So let's take a closer look at what it was that could have truly toppled the first domino in this chain reaction of devastating murders. It's not exactly clear when 
or why the beef between the Bleeders and Vultures originally started, with some Reddit detectives telling theories of a complicated web of affiliations that led to both factions eventually picking their sides. However, what we do know is that during Baton Rouge's deadliest year of 2021, numerous killings would end up taking place that may well have a connection to these crews, eventually leading to the assassination of True Bleeder in the beginning of the following year. Multiple people have been shot near the Mall of Louisiana this afternoon. Two people are dead and two others are at the hospital right now getting treatment. In the early hours of April the 23rd, 2021, a member of the Vultures called Zip, real name Aaron Batiste, had just celebrated his 29th birthday that night on the north side of Baton Rouge when he was shot by unknown assailants, later succumbing to his injuries in hospital. Well, a man has died after an early morning shooting on Plank Road. Sheriff's deputies say Aaron Batiste was rushed to the hospital around three this morning and later died from his injuries. Zip was a father of two and his murder left the family devastated, questioning when the senseless violence in the city was going to stop. Meanwhile, members of the Vultures would mourn the loss their way, vowing revenge in posts on social media. Later that year, the streets would heat up once again with a string of back-to-back -back shootings all taking place in the month of October. On the 8th of October 2021, a man named Jamorius Ferguson, aka Gmo, was shot outside a home in East Baton Rouge when someone opened fire from a passing vehicle, injuring him seriously. Ferguson himself was reportedly not a gang member, but actually a member of the US Army, as well as a founder of several non-profits, including one that was named after him, aiming to help and support youths and young adults in Louisiana. However, Gmo was also the big brother of V, a well-known Vulture member, and another well-known Vulture member called Dubug, who can commonly be seen alongside V in his music videos. The police would later note that they didn't consider Ferguson to have been the intended target of the shooting, perhaps implying that V or Dubug may have been the intended targets. Sadly, on May the 5th, 2022, almost seven months after the shooting, Ferguson would unfortunately succumb to his injuries and lose his life. The 25-year-old died on May 5th from injuries he suffered from a drive-by shooting that happened last year. Even with his passing taking place sometime later, the shooters in the gangs of Baton Rouge would not let up and continued causing havoc on the streets there. The shootings and killings around the two gangs had so far gathered relatively little attention. But only weeks after the shooting of Gmo in late October 2021, the war would become much more public, after the vulture rapper YKWHIF Carr was brutally murdered in a hotel parking lot. According to police, 23-year-old Malachi Demolin was shot multiple times and was pronounced dead at the scene. Carr, real name Maleka Demolin, had been releasing music together with his cousin V since at least 2015. However, his life and career aspirations would be put to a hold in October 2020 when he would be charged with the second-degree murder murder of a man named Brandon Chapman. Chapman was also an aspiring rapper who went by the name BME Beezy, but not much else is publicly known about his connections to the streets in Baton Rouge. Fortunately for Carr, in March 2021, a grand jury would ultimately decide not to indict him. as the case was seemingly determined to have been a matter of self-defense, with Carr allegedly defending himself against Chapman, who confronted Carr being with his ex. Unfortunately, in October 2021, almost exactly a year after the death of Chapman, Carr himself would end up losing his life when he was shot in the parking lot of a Holiday Inn in a brutal assassination style attack that according to witnesses sounded like he was shot with a fully automatic weapon or possibly a handgun with a switch. After Carr's death, bleeders would often diss him publicly calling him a diamond pack due to him always rocking a diamond grill. Rumors would also circulate online that the bleeders had something to do with Carr's death, particularly after Co-Bleeder would rap on his song Blow for Blow with Hot Boy Do released in November 2022, some lyrics that many believe refer to Carr's killing. The streets were hot after the killing of Carr, and only a few days later, another young man would end up losing his life. On the 28th of October, around 10.30 in the morning, a man was shot and killed on West Catalpa Street on the east side of Baton Rouge. Well, just a few hours ago, police say they responded to a shooting on West Catalpa Drive where they say one male victim was shot and killed. The victim would turn out to be a man named Jamonte Davis, an aspiring rapper who went by the name Mugotti. Mugotti was an alleged member of the gang SOG, or Sleep or Grind, yet another gang allegedly affiliated with the Bleeders, and his killing was considered to be a direct retaliation after the killing of Carr. At this point, NBA and 4K Trey had not yet been directly involved in the beef, but this would change on December the 2nd after Youngboy's right-hand man, Ben 10, and his cousin Marvin Batiste would end up getting shot while driving on a highway in Prairieville just southeast of Baton Rouge. The shooting, which police immediately determined to be a targeted retaliation, would leave Ben, the likely target of 
of the shooting wounded, but his cousin dead. The vehicle had been shot multiple times, and inside the vehicle we located a male that had been uh, deceased from gunshot wounds. That man was found in the passenger side of the truck. Authorities say the driver was also taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds. He's expected to survive. The death of Marvin was a huge loss for Ben, and to celebrate his life, Ben and other 4K Trey members like B Way and Hu Gang D would wear custom clothes to his funeral, adorned with slime green, the color of their blood set, 4K Trey. And Ben would later get a glowing chain in memory of his cousin. Many had speculated that the Bleeders might be responsible for this shooting, which they would seemingly hint at a few months later as Bleeder member 40 Glock U would rap on the song Gator Pack how somebody got killed, although the target was Ben. Ben would eventually reply to the dissing, saying how his cousin was not in the streets and therefore did not deserve to be killed. Hey, my cousin was a football pro. He didn't care that again. You kill somebody who even like this for real. The war between these lesser known gangs had now touched a prominent member of Baton Rouge's most famous rap empire. So it would be no surprise then that a major tragedy would soon follow. Right before entering 2022, Ben 10 would get into a heated argument with True Bleeder on Clubhouse, during which Bleeder would accuse Ben of being a fake gangster who had never shot or killed anyone. Gangsters on my shoes, don't get a hat. Who you ever shoot? To which Ben would reply, sarcastically agreeing. I ain't kill nobody. I'm Stop talking like that, Danny. Then, on the 13th of January 2022, the Bleeders would drop perhaps their most disrespectful song and music video so far, called Pick Your Partner Up, aimed squarely at the Vultures. In the song, Co-Bleeder would seemingly reference again the murder of Carr, rapping how this murder shit is real and how he will switch the Vultures down to see if they can really fly, with this accompanied by an ad-lib imitating the sound of a gun with a switch. Unfortunately, only a few months later, tragedy would strike on the Bleeders' side in a way that would shock even the people of Baton Rouge. Police have identified the two people killed in yesterday's drive-by shooting near the Mall of Louisiana, 18-year-old Dante Dorsey and 19-year-old Clifton Lindsay, both from Baton Rouge. Who at this point were beginning to get used to gangland killings happening in broad daylight. On the 25th of February 2022, just after 1pm, authorities responded to reports of shots fired in the 6300 block of Blue Bonnet Avenue near the Mall of Louisiana. They would arrive to find four men lying in the intersection, two wounded and two dead, along with a car riddled with bullet holes. What we do know, there are two deceased here and two that were transported by EMS. True Bleeder was later identified by his uncle as one of the deceased, and raw footage would be recorded of the aftermath of the murder, which is far too violent to show you on YouTube. The suspects in the shooting had apparently ditched their car after firing, escaping the scene in another vehicle. And just after the shooting, Baton Rouge police seemed to be already aware that the shooting had something to do with rival groups. And just like the killing of FBG Duck in Chicago a few years earlier, this was a bold shooting in the middle of the day in a part of town which was usually considered safe. The Mall of Louisiana was the biggest mall in the state and one of the most popular tourist spots in the city. This being a yet another reminder of how rappers who come from the streets are rarely safe anywhere in their hometowns, even if they're able to move away from the initial war zone. Co-Bleeder would later open up about that day, saying in an interview how he felt that they had already been at the mall for too long, and how he tried to warn the others about somebody possibly setting them up. Are we in the mall? Well, yeah. While we in that bitch, I'm telling them, I'm telling them all of them. I'm telling them 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 I'm telling it's serious, and we've been in it for too long. After True Bleeder's death, his ops would immediately begin to diss him. b Way Youngie would post a story saying LOL with a laughing emoji and also seemingly troll everybody by liking a tribute post to Bleeder. Ben 10 would also participate in the dissing, filming himself walking in a mall while saying We cannot go out like the mother boys. And he would also post himself on Instagram listening to True Bleeder's music. <laughs> Bleeder member 54 Don Dada, on the other hand, would go live on Instagram, devastated at the loss, crying while vowing for revenge. I'm gonna fuck over you bitches. His ops, on the other hand, would actually repost this video and ruthlessly make fun of him. NBA member Herm the Black Sheep would also seemingly reference this in a song Soul Snatcher with Big B, where his entire verse could be seen as a reference to the murder of True Bleeder. Fans would even speculate that Youngboy is actually referencing True Bleeder's killing in his song 4KT Baby, where he describes a car being shot 30 times, much like what actually happened. A few months after the death of True Bleeder, in April 2022, the bug, real name Dimitrion Grimm, was arrested and charged with the murder and attempts, with an obvious motive being that he was the brother of the murdered US soldier Jima. The bug was also allegedly a cousin and very close friend of the fallen vulture rapper YKWHIF Carr, and he had posted many tributes to him on social media following his death. When he was arrested, he was already facing unrelated charges for carrying illegal weapons, as well as being wanted by the police in Texas for money laundering charges. But what would ultimately tie him to the shooting was his 
Lacey's DNA that the detectives would end up finding in the car abandoned by shooters at the scene of the crime. Today, Demetrion Grimm was arrested and charged two counts of attempted first degree murder and one count of illegal use of a weapon. However, in a surprising turn of events, the police could not find enough evidence to formally charge DeBug with the shooting, but they would continue to detain him while continuing the investigation. The following April, police in Houston would end up arresting two other men in relation to True Bleeder's murder, one named Donald Ray Graves and another, Najua Jabari Harris, while they were allegedly caught while helping the smuggling of illegal immigrants. Graves is reportedly a known gang member in Baton Rouge who allegedly purchased one of the cars that was used in the drive-by that killed True Bleeder. Graves also had a warrant out for his arrest in connection with a targeted deadly shooting near the Mall of Louisiana back in February of 2022 that left two teenagers dead. Harris, on the other hand, is allegedly a known member of the Vultures, known as YKWHIF Do, with his profile picture on Instagram portraying him together with his fallen friend Carl. However, since these arrests, Debug has seemingly been released from jail and is living his best life, proudly labeling himself the Grim Reaper on Instagram, a play on his last name, Grim. So whether law enforcement will actually be able to prove who exactly was behind this gruesome drive-by still remains a big question mark, and justice still hasn't been delivered almost two years after these shocking events that rocked Baton Rouge. And in the meantime, the dissing has continued on both sides of the war. In the summer of 2023, Say Cheese would post their interview with Real Bleeder, where he addresses his beef with NBA. Real Bleeder and his partners would go on to claim that the videos on YouTube all about the war are cap, but also that they don't watch those videos. However, when asked if they knew the NBA guys growing up, Co Bleeder chimes in on the conversation, declaring with a huge smile on his face that Ben 10 was his best best friend growing up. Hey, you know that Ben 10 was like my best friend, you Damn, word. That was my best friend. Like growing up type? My real best friend, my right hand man. This trolling wouldn't go unnoticed by Ben 10 himself, who would respond a few months later in his song Right or Wrong, claiming not to know him. Elsewhere in the song, Tem would also throw shots at Real Bleeder, who had told in the same Say Cheese interview that he received $170,000 compensation after the death of his mother when he was younger, with Ben mocking him, saying he's only got money because his mother's in the ground. For now, it looks like the death of True Bleeder is yet another case in the long list of unsolved killings that highlight the out-of-control tragedy playing out on the streets of Baton Rouge, as well as being yet another example of an extremely talented rap artist who lost their life way too soon due to gang-related violence. I really hope that going forward, all the young men and women of Baton Rouge and beyond can stay safe, stay out the streets and find success doing something more positive like music. I hope you found that short story interesting. If you want to see more shorter mini documentaries about drill music and gang culture from around the world, then make sure you subscribe down below. And don't forget to leave me a comment letting me know what city's gang culture you want me to deep dive in next. Thanks for watching and rest in peace to everyone in this story who lost their lives.